Hello and welcome back to another Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire Season 8 in-game prediction video. This will be sort of an addendum video to how and where our story will end. We have a little more evidence that supports my original idea that to defeat the Night King, the Isle of Faces will have to burn. Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to Smokescreen. And to completely understand the idea here, please check out my end game video, A Dragon Raised by Wolves Part 5, where I gave my detailed idea of how I think A Song of Ice and Fire or Game of Thrones could potentially end by clicking the card at the top right of your screen. It should be popping out right now. It's a bit long, but goes in depth with book evidence that connects the White Walkers or the others to the Isle of Faces, and in a nutshell leads me to believe that the Isle of Faces will be the place the Night King will be destroyed. Unfortunately, it will likely mean magic as well. Burn them all takes on a whole new meaning. Of course, it could happen differently in the show, but the Isle has been mentioned once by Tywin in Season 2, and I do think they have time to introduce show watchers to the God's Eye via a brand flashback in Season 8. Perhaps he goes back in a vision to witness the Pact and formation of the Order of the Green Men and whatever in the hell they're protecting. Anyway, we have two more quotes here to support the general idea that the Isle of Faces and Werewoods will have to be burned to destroy the magic that created the Night King in the first place. First, we have a quote from Theon here as he heads towards Winterfell to take the castle. On his left, he can see tower tops above the inner wall, their roofs gilded by the rising sun. The red leaves of the Werewood were a blaze of flame among the green. Ned Stark's tree, he thought, and Stark's wood, Stark's castle, Stark's sword, Stark's gods. This is their place not mine. And that was from Theon 5 in A Clash of Kings, and of course the imagery here you get is the red leaves of the Weirwood were a blaze of flame among the green. So yet another reference to a Weirwood burning to go along with my original video. And remember, that's why the Children of the Forest and First Men warred against each other in the first place. And once the pact was signed on the Owl, the Order of the Green Men was formed to protect something, but what? Perhaps the source of magic in our story. And we also have another quote here from John at Castle Black when he's thinking of Winterfell after Theon had taken it. Winterfell, he thought. Theon left it burned and broken, but I could restore it. Surely his father would have wanted that, and Rob as well. They would have never wanted to see the castle left in ruins. You can't be Lord of Winterfell, you're bastard born, he heard Rob say again. And the Stone Kings were growling at him with granite tongues. You do not belong here, this is not your place. When John closed his eyes, he saw the heart tree with its pale limbs, red leaves, and solemn face. The weirwood was the heart of Winterfell, Lord Eddard had always said. But to save the castle, John would have to tear that heart up by its ancient roots and feed it to the red woman's hungry fire god. I have no right, he thought. Winterfell belongs to the old gods. And that is from John 12 in A Storm of Swords. So there it is, more imagery of destroying weirwood trees. And ironically, Melisandre is actually correct, just for the wrong reasons, and she doesn't even know it. So anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, be sure to check out my original video on how this thing's going to end. That link will be in the description below. And feel free to leave me any supporting evidence from the books as well in the comments below. Or perhaps any evidence that shoots it down. This idea that the Weirwoods will have to burn to destroy the source of magic that created the Night King in the first place. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers, La La Gig, Marilyn Bentley, Doc Holliday, Gaska, Hoonjav, Lo Horton, Aaron Hadbig, John Carey, Anastasia, Jason Landers, Ditt Smith, MJW, Carol Brown, D. Brown, Mike Colton, Lisa Phillips, Alfred Boismeyer, Rob Green, and Ricky Carrot. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. And to everyone on Patreon as well. And thank you to everyone on YouTube as well. I really appreciate the support. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.